guys. So look, girl, I finally got rid of that. Um, there was my butterfly pillow was back there in the way. And my camera was functioning in. Girl, that's not even the word I'm looking for. My camera was zooming in on my pillow when this whole supposed to be zooming in on me. So y'all, I'm getting ready for a birthday party just to go across the street, but um, I'm gonna be cute for the birthday party and the children. We're gonna talk about kids a little bit, y'all. If you don't have kids, you may not wanna hear it, but I just, I don't know, maybe I'm country. Maybe this, that's what it is, but I just feel like we expect too much from kids sometimes. And then oftentimes we as parents, we don't trust our kids enough. And so it's almost like a twofold thing. And it, it, it can be a little bit as a parent, um, it can be frustrating. Um, and and it, it's, it's a balancing act. So we're gonna be doing my makeup. It's just gonna be a light neutral bead. Cause. I'm done. Okay, baby. Um. You know what? I'm gonna be handing out butt weapons today to everybody. Everybody can get it. I know y'all like, dang, ain't we supposed to be talking about? <laughs> so, one of the things I wanna talk about is life skills for your children. Um, I just feel like not necessarily JB's generation, but like my niece's generation. Like these kids that are like 15 to 25 right now. Oh, hell, let's go up to 30. Some of these kids don't know hardly anything. Um, we expect for first of all, let me let me back up and say this. I think that the parents are the first educators. So Oftentimes, I see comments like, they should be teaching this in school. Mm, I agree. We should be having, you know, financial fitness at home. I mean, excuse me, at school. However, I think that the first lessons should come from your home and by leading as an example, okay? So, I also saw a thread that someone shared from East Texas, from Longview specifically, and it was a school somewhere in the South where it's for high school students. And this particular high school, um, puts on this little conference. They have like a banking area, a car dealership area. <clears throat> they have um, daycare and the kids are given a budget and they're to go to these booths and to spend their money wisely and to see how much money they have left over. And they actually bring people from the community to represent these different areas. And I think that's very smart that schools do that. Um, and at the same time, I really do think that as parents, a lot of this, a lot of this should start in the household. Um, I also saw another thread from a mom who was like, she was a little, um, afraid to have the talk. And we know what the talk is when it comes through puberty and, um, and through, uh, just having the talk. And she, and the, the child is, I believe her, her child is... 12 years old and the little girl was already asking questions and I'm like 12 years old y'all should have started this earlier D I'm sorry but you should you should have started that discussion earlier age appropriately 12 or 12 years old is a little like hell when I was in school I remember um foster middle school and that was a 12 year old girl pregnant those discussions should be started very early, in my opinion, age appropriate. And I get that it is uneasy. I get it can be embarrassing for you as a parent, but I would rather that information come from me rather than from Sha Shaquan and Damon at school. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I got to start talking to your kid field day. So, what do y'all think about that? Do you think that, you know... I mean, just give me your give me your thoughts about that. And I rem I remember being in school and they divided the girls and the boys up. The girls went into room room. The boys went into room room. They even gave us like mini pads and stuff like that. And they discussed puberty and 
I could tell, excuse me, I could tell that the teachers were a little bit embarrassed about it. So all of those discussions should start at home. Again, age appropriately, using correct terminology. Like when I talk to JB as young as five, six year old, five and six years old about our body parts, I don't say wee wee, pee wee, to, you know, whatever nickname, it's his penis. Penis. We don't say, you know, we don't use any cold names. It is what it is. Um, same thing, a, a vagina. So funny. Remember, he was around four, three or four years old. <laughs> and I was going to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't believe I'm admitting to this. I was going to the bathroom and he saw me get, he saw me, you know, get up. And he was like, he looked at me. He, I think y'all, he was like three or four. He was like three. And he was like, where's your penis? I said, baby, I don't have a penis. Mama has a vagina. He's like, but how do you pee if you don't have a penis? I said, JB, I have a vagina. And that's how I pee. So he's like, but don't you need a penis to pee? So he was relating penis with peeing. <laughs> And then he would say stuff like, uh, he would say, yeah, I saw mama, um, her, her, her bottom part, it looks like a mountain. <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, it's like a mountain. I'm like, okay, you know what? You, you, you can't be in here while I'm going to the bathroom. Get you, you stay out, stay out, stay your but The children will follow you everywhere, child. So yeah, yeah, y'all gotta start talking to your kids. I know my, when my, um, best friend her little girl was going through puberty and she had her cycle and she was like oh my god i have to have discuss this this discussion with from the girl you better yeah i remember the discussion my mom had with my sister and i i think we i think and again she was young when she had us so and you know her mother died when she was young so she didn't have an example so my mama was basically like 11 years old 11 or 12 and so she she's like okay so she's like, you know, if a man lays on top of you, you'll get pregnant. That is exactly what she said, y'all. She said, if a man lays on top of you and you allow him to put his thing in you, you'll get pregnant. So I didn't know anything about semen. I didn't know anything about the pregnancy, anything. I just, you know, from that discussion, I got that, okay. She didn't say anything about protection. She didn't say anything about nothing. Ciao. That was the discussion we had. So, yeah. Um, girl, I know people are not looking forward to it, but you got You have to do it. You, you want to prepare your child. Um, that way you can say you did your part as a parent. You know, that is what parenting is about. And, you know, so. And I honestly feel like it's discussions that should be in my opinion, is not a discussion you should have once and that's it. It's something you should be talking about on a yearly basis. And I say going through puberty, you need to be up in those discussions. Um, I'm, I'm even with JB being eight years old, like I said, we talk about the different body parts. Um, he's, of course he had the, the questions about, you know, how are babies born? I'm like, child, I don't know. And the collard greens, you know, collard green feel. Um, <laughs> I verbatim said a man plants a seed in a woman's body. And when that seed grows, it turns into a baby. And so, you know, the beauty of me homeschooling is that we will be talking about body parts and we will be talking about the reproductive system. He already has seen pictures of this type of stuff. Um, we will be talking about the reproductive system and all of that. I will say this though, I think it's way easier nowadays to deal with boys than girls. Honey, these girls and these attitudes, like everybody I know that has a girl, nearly everyone I know that has a girl is like the attitude is out, out of control. Out of control. The boys seem to, you have problems now and until 12. You know, they seem to be a little bit better than the girls in the teenage years. At least from the people that I know. So I'm crossing my fingers that my baby doesn't give me any issues. I didn't. You know, they say that you get paid back. I was a pretty good kid, you guys. Honestly, I was. Now, my husband, I don't know how his ass was. So if anything pop off, it's because of him. You know, we already know it's because of his ass. So y'all, there's that. And then... I was in the wife code group. Oh, girl, we're going to talk talk something else about building men. 
getting with these men you have to build up. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So y'all, let y'all kids be kids. Someone shared a picture of a baby. She's a baby to me. She looked like she's around five or six years old. She had pink dookie braids that were to her waist. Let your children be children. And um, one thing that is is something that I really am learning to do with JB is that with JB, when he gets hurt, <laughs> girl, black parents, sometimes when he gets hurt, I'm like, you fine, you good, get up, you good. No, he's not fine. If he's crying, I'm going to go over and I'm going to console him um, because I don't want him growing up as a young boy and not being able to, what am I trying to say, y'all? Not being connected with those feelings because if that was a girl, I would, oh, rush over if he gets hurt. You know, we treat girls totally different. Sometimes even when he gets hurt, I let his father console him. I'm like, go to your father, let your father love on you. And I think that's very important if you have a male figure in your life. And so when he gets hurt, absolutely. Now, I don't baby him. That's totally different. But when he gets hurt and he's crying real tears, I can tell by now, he's crying real, real tears and he's hurt. I make sure that he's okay and then we move on and nine times out of ten as soon as one of us you know let him know he's fine he's okay it stops it sooner you know what I mean so um yeah y'all I learned from Miss Delightful hey girl one of the things I learned from her and she she didn't know this till I told her I've learned a lot from you sis um Apologize to your kids when you do something wrong. When you're in the wrong and you've done something, apologize. I think JB would be okay. JB is a very empathetic child. He's very compassionate. You know, he's a vegetarian because of that. Because he cares for animals. He told me once that animals have souls and it's not right for us to eat them. I said, well, child, I'm about to fry this chicken so... <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, let your children be children. Um, we still are careful with how much screen time JB watches. He doesn't really, I mean, he has his TV that he watched, mostly YouTube. But um, it's so funny when he goes and plays with other kids, they are on games. They are just so, and he wants to play. And a lot of these kids are so into their gadgets. And you know, he has them, but we try to limit it. Um, so yeah. Girl, this wife group, child, y'all, I'm, I'm gonna be messy. Child, I'm in this wife group. Y'all give me, let's, let's give this woman some advice. Let me read this thing to y'all. I cannot believe. Why do we do this? Why do we as women get into these relationships? Because we, you know, because we, I don't know, we, out of loneliness. I don't know. Let me read this to y'all. <clears throat> My husband is not a great husband. He's actually terrible. He's lazy, and when I call him out, he gets mean. We've been together for nine years, married a little over one year. I'm eight years older than him and established in my career, plus my lifelong dream of being an author has taken off with four books published in four years. When we first met, I had a house, a career, a retirement fund, was actively involved in charity work. Yes, sis. I raised Yorkshire Terriers and was teaching myself how to decorate wedding cakes as a hobby. Girl... I was quite fulfilled. Okay, then what's the problem? Oh, you needed a man? Okay. He was living in his panic parents' attic, working a minimum wage job, and played video games, drank excessively, and that was about it. We're an unlikely match, but he was kind, and that's what matters. This letter. I'm sorry, y'all. Let's start over from the beginning. If you don't want to hear it, you don't have to hear it. All right, y'all. Here we go. Well, we, okay, when I first met, I had a house, a career, you know, she was writing her books, doing charity work, um, uh, raising some dogs. She just had everything. He was living at home with his mama, working a minimum wage job, unlikely match, but he was kind. And he didn't transition into adulthood very well because his mom did everything for him. He would throw clothes on the living room floor and she'll follow him cleaning up his messes. I thought he'd eventually change to a point. 
Um, but I saw someone who needed out of mom's house immediately. He was a nice, smart guy and he was throwing his life away. We dated for a few years and I helped him apply for college. He had no clue about loans and such. And then I said I'll support him if he wanted me to so he could finish his degree. He moved in and was a full-time college, got a 4.0 and things were great. Hey man, but he wanted to be a teacher and an author like me. So he quit school just to make sure um, that's what he wanted and got a job working as an instructional aide. Okay, he writes every day, but I'm not sure he understands the industry. I tried to explain to him how publishing works, yada, yada, yada. He only works 28 hours a week and makes $12 an hour. I work 60 to 70 hours and carry our benefits and pay for everything. I buy him a car. I buy him everything he needs. I buy him an iPad, Beats, iPencil. He wants for nothing. Of course he doesn't because your ass is buying him everything. We agreed with him working part time and not going back to school. He'll do the majority of the big housework and yard work. He saved his money to finish school. We can live off my income. He does nothing. He does nothing. He complains about how exhausting his five hour workday is. There's always piles of laundry dishes in the sink. I get a warning from my what? Oh, she's getting a warning, warning from like the HOA that we need to cut the grass or pay a fine. His response is, I'll do it later. I've had an emotionally draining year, yada, yada, yada. I have two books. Okay, so what does she say? Um, I'm at a loss. Any advice? What makes... Child, I, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this type of, this, this... You basically took the role of his mama. Am I wrong or am I wrong? Right, y'all? She took she took the role of this man's mama. He was already living at home. You bought his loan. You bought him, him a car. You helped him get into college. You know, you helped him buy all his iPad, or whatever. Now he wants to be an author. You got you a mama's boy. What you need to do is take back all your shit. And, and let him live in with his mama. His mom, girl, as soon as she got here, his mama was probably happy. She was ecstatic. She was like, hey, man. I just can't, y'all. You, your life was fulfilled. I, I, my, this is my thing. How does someone like this, a caliber, caliber of a woman, meet someone like that? So somewhere in come in the comments, she even wrote, I understand, but when he touched me, it just felt good. So he got that gold peen. You know what I mean, girl? <laughs> he he throwing it down. She probably speaking in tongues and everything. Like seriously. So no. You gotta bring more than that to the table. Girl, please send him back home to his mama. Take his stuff away. She wants to know what she should do, y'all. What would y'all advise her to do? Huh? Do you think the marriage can be... So it's not even about... It's the man. Like, ain't no grown man. She didn't even give his age, but she said she was eight years older than him. Ain't no grown man gonna change just out of the blue like that. Especially if he's used to you do. Why should he want to do anything if you've been doing everything for him? Why would, what is the encouragement to do anything? He got a roof over his head. He got a, a living maid. He, he got sex on a, on a regular basis. What's, child. So, what I would be very surprised, he's probably not smart enough to do this, but you never know. She better hope he don't hit her up for spousal support. Especially since, since you know, she's accomplished. Seems like she's been very successful. And he's just sitting up here, not doing anything. Y'all, let me hurry up with my hair and makeup because the baby's supposed to be over here next door in like 10 minutes. And look at my hair. Y'all, let me just say this. There is nothing wrong with getting with someone who is, you know, starting out and um you know just just not necessarily struggling but as long as they have potential like when i met my husband of course we were all in college 
um and he told me you know some of the things that he was trying to do wanting to do and what i saw in him was potential so yeah my husband's really good with his money because child some one of us have to be good <laughs> thomas is out here looking sad so let me go ahead and put on my clothes and we'll go over <laughs> that's not funny jb yeah, I'm so petty. I sent a message to D. She's running the um the AZ um, Natural Hair Expo, and I said, "Let me know what I can do." I'm so sorry, y'all. It's like next weekend. I'm like, "Let me know what I can do," but I can also sit around and, and be pretty. Girl, are you gonna help me or not? All right, y'all. Let me go ahead and, and get these babies across the street. Bye, y'all.